This is 1.4, which talks about segments, rays, parallel lines, and planes. We're going to first take a look at segments and rays and opposite rays. So a segment is simply just a part of a line, and it's a part of a line that has two endpoints. So on this line here, I'm going to go ahead and name this point A and this point B, and I'm going to highlight the part in between them. This right here is my segment. Notice it has two endpoints and it lies on that line. Now when you name this segment, it has a special notation. So over here under the word segment, I'm going to write A and B right next to each other, and then over it, I'm going to simply draw a flat bar. This tells me that it is a segment that I'm talking about without writing the word segment. As we know in math, there's tons of symbols and notation to help us shorthand. This is a new shorthand. So now let's take a look at what a ray is. A ray has one endpoint and then extends forever in another direction. I'm going to do this ray in purple. I'm going to once again give myself two endpoints. I'll call this X and this one Y. And let me pick a direction for this to go. I guess I'll go to the left. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this, and it's going to go all the way. But in order for me to make everybody else know that this is a ray, I have to also highlight the arrow to indicate that it goes on forever. Now, naming rays is a little bit trickier because you have to write the letters in the direction that you're going. So you always start with the end point, the, the finite end point. In this case, it isn't X, it's Y. Y is as far as it's going to go to the right, so that's where I want to start. So I'm going to write Y, and then I'm going to write where this, this ray is going towards, which in this case, if I start at Y, I go towards X. So I write Y, X. And then I can write a little ray right above it. And that indicates, yes, this is in fact a ray. Now if you don't like that, if you like to go in the order that you see it, from left to right, that's okay too, but you have to then reverse your arrow in the direction that the ray is pointing. So when I look at this picture, it literally looks like it is going this direction. Either one of these ways is perfectly fine. You can choose which way you want. Now, opposite rays are kind of silly, um, but we need to know them. Opposite rays are basically two rays that share an endpoint. So I'm going to put an endpoint right in the middle here. And I guess I will label this E, point E. So on this endpoint, I'm going to draw one ray coming from it. So I'll go to the right in green here, and I'm going to highlight this arrow, and I'm going to give myself a point to indicate right here, and I'll name it M. So this is one of my rays. And then I'm going to do another ray at the other part of this line that uses the same exact endpoint. It'll be orange. And I'm going to make a point here, and I'm going to call it L. These are my initials, E, M, L, Aaron Marie Larson. So what I always know about opposite rays is they're always going to form a line. And I'm going to go ahead and write this out so that you can see a little bit more notation. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to write, and I will do this um, in the direction that I see them. So I'm going to say L, E. So this is the first ray that I'm going to do with an orange. And since the ray is going to the left, that's how I need to draw my little notation. So I'm going to say L, E, and ray em, and on this case for ray em, it does go towards the right, so I can write it like this. And then I can simply say r opposite rays, and I'm going to shorthand this. You're going to see more and more of my own personal shorthand. You are welcome to create your own. So the way I would read that is ray le and ray em are opposite rays. So this is some vocabulary that we want to make sure that you know. Let's take a look at a couple more things.
We're going to take a look at parallel lines, skew lines, and parallel planes. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. I'm going to draw a picture for us to work with. All right. So the picture that we're going to do is I'm going to draw a 3D box. which will look something like this. All right. And we're going to give these uh, intersections some names. So I'm going to name this A, this point here. This is going to be point B. And we're going to do C down here and then D, and then we need to go to the back, and then we're going to do, we'll call this G, H, I, and then we'll do J. Alright, so I'm going to highlight some parallel lines. Hopefully you already know what parallel lines are. If you don't, they are simply lines that will never, ever intersect each other. They always have the same amount of distance in between them. So over here in this picture, I am going to go ahead and highlight a couple lines that I think that are parallel. There are several different pairs in here, and then I'm going to show you the notation for them. So the two parallel lines that I see, I could say that GH, I'm going to put arrows at the ends, and AB are indeed parallel lines. If that is a true box, which my drawing is not drawn to scale, but we are assuming that it is, then those two lines will never intersect. And I'm going to use some new notation for line as well as parallel. So I'm going to start with line AB. So I'm going to say line AB. Now above this is a bar with errors at both ends that look just exactly like a line. In order to indicate parallel, they literally look like two vertical bars. That means parallel in math. And I'm going to tell me next what it's parallel to. So GH. GH with a bar and a line above it. So those are parallel lines. Another thing that we have are called skew lines. And skew lines are kind of tricky at first, but you will get used to them. Skew lines are non coplanar. And that means that they are parallel, or uh, they're not parallel, and they do not intersect. So I'm going to write a couple notes here for myself so that you can see this a little bit clearer. That means no intersection and not parallel. So try to think of that as I'm doing this. And what you think would be skew lines. I'm going to go ahead and draw my first line. So I'm going to go ahead and connect A and D together here. So try to look at this for a minute and see if you can find a line that this is skewed to. I'm going to go ahead and write over here that we're talking about line AD. So go ahead and take a look at that for just a second. All right, now, if you haven't seen one yet, it's okay. I'm going to show you um, what one of them would be. I'm looking over here at CI, and if I connect those, make a line, I want you to think about how those two lines would be if you were actually holding a box. They would not intersect each other, and they are not parallel. So I do have two skew lines here, CI are skew lines. And the last kind of uh, idea that we're going to look at here is pa are parallel planes. And parallel planes are simply planes that never intersect each other. So for instance, the ceiling in your room and the floor, those planes will never intersect. Or the window on the wall opposite your door, those are planes that will never intersect. So I'm just going to uh, highlight 
what a couple of those planes would be, and I'm going to show you how we're going to write them. So I guess I'll just work with the top plane here. I'm going to go ahead and highlight it in purple. So this plane, the top of my box, and then the bottom plane. And all you have to do to, to, to notate planes are you write the letters in the same order. So start with one point, then go counterclockwise or clockwise, but always start with the same place. So I'm going to start with A. I'm going to write A, and I'm going to go clockwise here. So G, H, B. Oh, I forgot to write the word plane before it. I'm sorry. Let me try that one more time. So I'm going to say plane, A, G, H, B. You have to tell me that it's a plane. And then I'm going to tell you what it's parallel to. So I'm those two vertical bars again. And I'm going to write plane. And now I have to be really careful about my notation because it has to be in the same order. So D would be written first. And then I would also go in that clockwise position again. So J would be next. And then I and then C. So those are the vocabulary and the main terms that we're going to be looking at in this particular section.